Uh, I think, if anything, uh, Jonathan, we should be listening to the second part much more than the first. I think for the Iranians to come out and say that they're not going to enrich beyond 60 percent, not much of a concession. First, the obvious point that we don't know what we don't know about the Iranian nuclear program and Iran's nuclear facilities, always an Achilles heel of the inspection process and of the JCPOA, or of any negotiating process with Iran, for that matter. Uh, and also, the fact that Iran is at 60 percent, of course, puts it at or near the point where it's a nuclear threshold state, which from Israel's perspective is past Israel's red line, uh, has not, is not past the American red line. For all the talk in the recent weeks, Jonathan, about more agreement between the Biden administration and the bennett Lapid government, at the end of the day, the United States continues to repeat its mantra that Iran will never get a nuclear weapon not repeating a mantra that Iran won't be a nuclear threshold state. And the 60% enrichment, along with the advancement in the Iranian centrifuges, according to almost all analysts, puts Iran either at or very close to the point where it's a nuclear threshold state. And that's a point where the program, from Israel's perspective, will not only have to be stopped, but will have to be rolled back. And from Israel's perspective, that should be a goal, either of the agreement or more likely at this point, of a kind of maximum pressure campaign. So this brings us to the second point, and that is if Israel cannot live with that, then it will have to go into action, prompting any Iranian action. Are, are, are we there, or are we closely getting there? Uh, we're close to that point, Jonathan, and you're right. You're right even to question the premise. Is that really Israel's red line, right? In principle, Israel's red line is that Iran shouldn't be a threshold state. That's what you hear, I think, from just about anybody in the security establishment or, frankly, the public. But is that a red line for Israel to take military action? Or is Israel only going to take military action if Iran moves beyond threshold status and actually becomes a nuclear weapon state? That's, I think, a central question before policymakers here. What exactly is the real red line, not only for raunting the United States and for the, that matter the international community to embark on a real pressure campaign against Iran, but for Israel actually to take military action, obviously not an easy decision for decision makers and for policy makers here. And yes, the decision they're facing, I think the conventional wisdom here is that there's no military strike that's imminent, but there is a military strike that is, has a program that's being developed for use in the medium term, let's say. And, and briefly, uh, uh, Jake Sullivan was here last week saying that the U.S. has patience for weeks, not longer than that. What does that mean? I think it means in some sense what Jake Sullivan is saying, that the United States is going to demand Iran show more of its cards and make more movement over the course of the next few weeks, that if the Iranians don't budge in their position, I do think that in that sense, it's no longer a bluff on the part of the Biden administration. You hear that from Jake Sullivan. You hear that from envoy Rob Malley. I think the more interesting question is if the Iranians do make some kind of movement, right, movement off of their hardline positions, that might be enough to get the Europeans interested, for example, but would be enough really to have the Israeli government continue to say the Iranians aren't doing anything meaningful, would the United States at that point be interested in going into a deal that the Israeli government wouldn't like? It could get more interesting at this stage. I think it's still we're still at the stage of theatrics rather than substance.